and I'm telling you what to do so it doesn't happen to you. I don't want this happen to you. I want you to prove me wrong. They're not gonna be a good fit if you wanna sell over the phone. And I wanna tell you exactly what to look out for. In this video, we're talking about why you shouldn't use your local installer if you're gonna sell over the phone. And welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Ivan, and I help people grow profitable sales orgs in solar, being location independent, generate their own leads, the whole nine yards. So what I wanna focus on in this video is, I get a ton of questions. And people ask me, hey Van, like I got this installer, should I use them? You know, they've they're been really good to me, but, right? And I'm glad people ask those questions because those are sometimes like, you would never even think in a million years that somebody that's treating you good, somebody that has served you for a long time, they're not gonna be a good fit if you wanna sell over the phone. And I'm gonna give you a few different pointers that you can take. And at the end of the day, you can do whatever the hell you want. I mean, the decision is yours at the end of the day. But I wanna give you what's worked for me and my clients. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Pretty much, if you're gonna work with an installer and they're local to you, and you have had experience working with that installer without EPC, that's awesome, that's great. But the fact of the matter is, if they're local, if they're operating in just one area, that most probably means that they're not a very big installer. And not that that's bad, maybe they will be able to treat you, maybe you even get faster installs. If you're gonna sell in a state where installs are you know, a little bit slower, if you're gonna work with a bigger company, and they can treat you a lot better, meaning like, your installs instead of taking 60 days could take literally like 25 to 35 days or 40 days, right? Which is a huge difference, uh, especially if you're starting out. But the thing is, let me tell you why. First of all, they're not operationally sound, okay? Which means not their small-minded thinking. Some of these installers, they can have big goals. They might wanna be a national installer one day, you know? But the fact of the matter is, as of right now, for when you want them to do you know, your deals, for when you want to sell over the phone, they're not, okay? And that's that. And you need to accept the fact that they're not the best right now for what you want them to do. They're not operationally sound. And one of those things that might not be operationally sound with a company like that, since they're not as big as somebody who maybe is a national installer or multi-state installer, is their communication. And they might not have another individual that's gonna be basically, you know, providing you that value, you know, communicating back and forth, seeing if all your deals come through, right? And that's a big difference between a small installer, like a local installer that you've been using maybe, and somebody who's a national installer. That's one of the first things. Not that they're bad. I'm just saying if you decide to work with someone like that, if you decide to continue to use your local installer, I want you to keep that in mind. That they might not be able to get you proposals fast enough, right, done fast enough when you want them to. And if you're selling over the phone, the reality is is that, you know, you have to book the individual for in an hour, two hours, three hours, whatever, right, in the shortest time frame possible. If you've had a phone call with a prospect, you're gonna wanna get them on the call again in the shortest time frame possible. And so, that company, that EPC that you're using, they have to have someone who's allocated specifically to communicate with you and to build proposals. And these local installers, I mean, my experience has been that they don't, okay? And they won't be able to get you fast enough, or, or at least, you know, my experience has been that way. I want you to prove me wrong. If you have something that's working for you, keep doing it. But I'm telling you what's worked for me, and so, I don't wanna leave any stone unturned and I wanna tell you exactly what to look out for. All right, that's, so that was number one. The communication was number one. Number two is the money. I've talked about it in previous videos. If you haven't seen them, you can go back to, you know, on the channel. I've talked about these videos a lot. I have a huge like topic, a whole module on this in my course. You can check it out down in the description. One of the main things is that when you're growing, if you wanna scale, a multi-state over the phone sales org in solar, you're gonna wanna have a very, very good arrangement with your installer. And for the most part, that is releasing a larger portion of your upfront money, 
right, which is your commission as a sales org, releasing that amount up front as opposed to waiting to see everything on the back end. And while that might work for you if you're a one man operation, I assure you if you have you know, a few guys working on your team, they wanna eat, the families wanna eat. Second of all, you probably have marketing expenses too, you know, and so expenses pile up and you need income coming in. You've sold 10 deals this week, but what difference does it make? You know, and so I don't want you to be one of these people that because of your inability to, to collect some of your commissions in an adequate amount of that, because you can't do that, you know, you're left there twiddling your thumbs thinking, oh yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm gonna wait to get my back ends and I'm gonna get back in. Look, I've seen it all. You know, in this industry, I've seen clients do extremely well. They're riding the wave, getting sales, and then all of a sudden they're like, hey Van, sorry man, we're gonna have to stop the campaign. We just, you know, we're gonna have to wait a little bit. And I'm just like, dude, why would you do this to yourself? So don't, and I'm telling you what to do so it doesn't happen to you. I don't want this happen to you. Cause it's, it sucks, man. Knowing that, you know, you've closed 10 deals this week, but you run out of money. And so you don't want to be in this situation. And that's one of the big reasons why you should not be working with a local installers because they won't be able to provide you with that kind of arrangement. Whereas a big installer, they have a huge pool of money. That's number one. Number two, they understand how this works and they understand there's people that are starting to do this nationwide selling solar in their underwear, which is what I teach as well. And, um, you know, they understand that and it's business, you know, it's a little bit of a bigger risk for them. They're open to that kind of arrangement. Whereas a small thinking guy or a small installer, an installer that could serve your area, they might not be open to do something like that. And then what are you going to do? So that's pretty much the second reason. All right. And the last thing is something called the perfect packet. The bigger installers would have something called the perfect packet or whatever they call it. Some installers call it, you know, different names, doesn't matter, but it means the same thing. Okay. Usually a installer who is used to working with multi-state sales orgs, you know, that are submitting deals left and right online. They're used to working with people like that and they know, that you as a sales org, you need a very clear criteria of when are you gonna get paid, how are you gonna get paid, what are the steps that you have to take to get paid. In a lot of the local cases, for example, you have to take pictures of the roof, or you have to do this, you have to do that, right? Which obviously you can, you can still make the homeowner do that for you, which is sometimes uh, can be a part of the perfect packet, but some of these small guys, man, they would ask you to literally like go to their home, you know, check absolutely everything. And they don't have a way of you submitting everything online. Or, you know, they might require, you know, to get you the N1 to release the first set of payments. They might require you for them to go out, you know, to check the roof, check everything before they can release your N1 payments. And that is a pain in the butt. You don't want to find yourself in that situation. So basically what I'm saying is they don't have a clear way, right? An outline that is, all right, I need to do X, Y, and Z before I get paid. And it happens a lot slower because at that point you have to rely on them, on their team. You know, they, they, they could have backlog issues during the summer. You know, even an install that has two or three crews could have backlog issues. And you know, you're left there having to wait for someone to go out there and actually, you know, check the customer's roof and everything else before you ever get paid. And the time's ticking. I haven't worked for a long time with local installers, but that's one of the things that I've heard from clients of mine, people that I, I know in the industry. I'm telling you that's a deal breaker right there. The last thing is at the end of the day, some of these small guys, they might have a fast install. They might give you a better red line even, but at the same time, they might not give you any M1 payments. And that is one of the biggest deal breakers in solar. If you're trying to build a sales org for selling over the phone. 
So what you need to do is you need to go back, maybe you need to rewatch the video, maybe you took notes, I don't know if you're, watch, if you're listening to this in the car, I don't, I don't care. I just want you to know these things because I don't want you to find yourself in a situation where you're like, oh, I wish I knew this. And the reason I'm recording these videos, honestly, is because I talk to people a lot and I keep hearing the same things and all these video ideas that I have that you see me posted on my YouTube channel, a lot of the times those are things that people are genuinely struggling with. And I'm like, dude, that's so like, it is so obvious. I can't even fathom how can someone struggle with something like this? Because to you, if you know what, you, what you're doing, if you know the process from A to Z, everything is like streamlined, everything is, it just makes sense. And you can't even fathom how can someone str struggle with something like that. The reality is, is that there are a ton of people that don't know this stuff. And I don't want you to be one of them because that could be a serious struggle. And I'd rather you, you worry about, you know, <laughs> that you can't hire, you know, salespeople fast enough because you're growing. You can't pass on all the leads that you generate. Like, I'd rather you have problems like that. I'd rather you have different levels of problems. I don't want you to be dealing with problems like this because of the lack of knowledge. And so you should be focused on growing the business, not like, oh, how do I learn how to do this? And you know, and you don't need that. Actually, what I've done is, and you can check it out below as well. The, I'll leave the link. Uh, you should be able to learn about the course that I've created. I'm super excited. I'm super proud about this thing, man. It's just pretty much, my biggest life's work. And this training that I've created is honestly, it feels like, like that's my Mona Lisa. Like literally, that's, that's how special it is to me because I know it would solve the shortage of information in the solar industry and people would just know what to do. And you just have different levels of problems and just be focusing on growing your business, which you should. Okay, you shouldn't be worried about like what installer to work with and stuff like that. Because those are things that take time. I'm not saying that you you can't learn the type of stuff that I'm talking about, for example, in this video on your own, but all the people that I that I know that know about this stuff, they've been in the industry for years. And if you're just getting started, you don't need to stay in the industry for years, like literally on a hamster wheel, not, not getting anywhere. You need to get out there and do all the things that I talk about and take action. Again, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to check it out, whatever, but the link will be in the description. If you want to check it out, check it out. If not, no harm, no foul. Still love you for being a subscriber. And by the way, if you're not subscribed, make sure you do by clicking the link down below. And also, if you like this video, make sure we boost it up by giving me a like, all right? So I appreciate you, even if you're not a subscriber, even if you just spend this amount of time, you know, randomly throughout the day to watch this video. I hope it was of value to you and I look forward to seeing you again in the next one.